Now let's talk a little bit about BIOS and how we use the BIOS to configure a motherboard. Accessing the BIOS setup program varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. Generally speaking, you'll use a different type of key or com key combination to, during the boot process before it gets to the operating system. Uh, once you identify this as the computer is starting up and you press the, that key or that combination of keys, you will then bring up the setup screen with different menus and help features. Here's an example of the BIOS setup main menu. You can see we have different tabs here. We have main, we have configuration, performance, security, power, the boot. The boot one is very, very important as you may need to change how your boot order is in case you're doing a, an install or perhaps you've added another component. So depending on the situation, you may need to change that boot or maybe you need to set the time. You can set the time in your BIOS. Um, there's different things. Just get into the BIOS on your computer, poke around and get a good feeling of what all is there. You can see here on the main here, if we would scroll down, we have the system date and time available to us so that we can change that. You'll notice at the right you have different uh, keys that are being promoted there on the right to as to what to do. If you wanted to save, you might use the F10 key that will save what you have, exit, and then reboot or may move on to the splash screen. So just make sure you pay attention to what keys need to be used. Now we also have another type of standard that is extremely slowly replacing BIOS and that is the UEFI, the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. Now this interface is between the firmware on the motherboard and the actual operating system. And Essentially, this is going to improve the overall boot process. So this, you'll see sometimes in your BIOS that there is an option, a new boot option, for the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. Now when setting up the BIOS to configure your motherboard, you can configure onboard devices. You can either enable or disable these ports, or even a whole group of ports. You can see different information about your hard drive and optical drives. Uh, you can change the processor and clock speeds. Some other boards allow changing the processor speed and or the memory multiplier. You'll hear about people overclocking their processor. You can do some your own research on this. It's a risky situation if you want to try to get the maximum performance from your processor. But there are some downfalls that can happen if you do it incorrectly. You can check the fan speeds, voltage, monitor temperature of your, or the, you can monitor the temperatures and speeds of your computer here in the BIOS as well. You can also check for intrusion detection. Uh, this is a error or a item that can be logged in an event that whenever a case is open, you can have it create an intrusion detection instance so that you know when you go in into your computer and check it if the case might have been open without your knowledge. So you, the next time you go in you might boot up, go to your uh, BIOS, go to the configuration or wherever the event logging is at and you can see that there might be a new event type that says chassis intrusion and it will give you a time of that occurrence to check. And then that might be an indication that someone else might have been in there doing some work, you know, another technician, or maybe even if you're working on someone's computer, you can say, oh, well, I noticed that this was opened at such and such date, and find out maybe they did something that they forgot to tell you, because they, they might have been embarrassed to tell you, and that's why we have the incident that was created and why you're working on that computer. Then we have another layer of security that's not used a whole lot, but we'll go ahead and talk about it anyway. And that's the power on passwords. Now these are assigned in BIOS and kept in the CMOS RAM to prevent unauthorized access to the computer and or the BIOS setup utility. If you set this password, which you would set up here in BIOS, a person could turn on the computer. If they don't have that power on password, they can't actually get to the operating system. So uh, if someone leaves though, then you have that problem, what was that password, right? We have ways around that. But as it may be possible to set up a supervisor and a user password. So if both, if both of the passwords are set, you must enter the enter all of that to get into the actual boot system to make to get into the Windows. It's just a way of protecting unauthorized access to the computer. 
Now, how you do this, this is going to depend from motherboard to motherboard and where it's located in the BIOS. And you can see here that sometimes the system power on password will require a password to be entered every boot, and sometimes they set up power on password only requires a password to be entered into BIOS. So it just depends on the motherboard and the BIOS system. Another security feature I want to talk about is LoJack. Now you might have heard of this before. This is just technology that's embedded in the BIOS itself of several laptops to protect against theft. Um, you have to subscribe to the service for it to work, but the software and the BIOS work together to locate a laptop whenever it is connected to the internet. So if, if you are able to buy one and uh, maybe you have people that travel a lot, LoJack might be good in case they lose it or in case their laptop is stolen then the LoJack service will help you locate where that's at and you can work with your authorities on retrieving your device. Now some motherboards will allow you to study password in order to access the actual hard drive. Um, so if you want you can use this drive encryption and drive password protection. The password is kept on the drive so that it still works even if the drive is moved to another computer. And we all know hard drives fail, right? But uh, if you're using this and you you know, have to take that hard drive out and get some data off of it, as long as you know that password, you can decrypt that, that hard drive and get the data off of it if you have that password. So just there's many layers of security that can be applied to your computer systems. Not all of them are used, but I just want to make you guys aware of it. Now let's talk about maintaining a motherboard. A motherboard is considered an FRU, which I talked about previously, a field replaceable unit. So if you are going to replace one, you need to know how to update the motherboard drivers, update the BIOS, and replace the CMOS battery. Now we'll take a look here at updating motherboard drivers. Now device drivers are small programs that allow software to interact with certain hardware. Um, use Windows internal drivers, bundled CD drivers if you have them available, or download drivers from the manufacturer's site. It's not a bad practice to go out there once in a while and just check the manufacturer's website to see if there are any drivers available. Let's say you have a uh, Dell laptop or even a Dell desktop. You go to their website, you put in your service tag information, it has a uh, detect system that can scan your computer, see if there are any uh, motherboard drivers that need updated, and you can download those and update your drivers that way. We'll take a look at updating the flash BIOS. This is the, the process of upgrading or refreshing the ROM BIOS chip. Now BIOS updates are downloaded from motherboard manufacturer websites or even some third party websites. And the only reason you would really do this is um, if you're, perhaps your motherboard is unstable. And these updates will allow you to kind of incorporate some new features or areas that need to be fixed that the manufacturer knows about. And this will allow you to fix that and now your motherboard will be a lot more stable and work as you need it to. Uh, you can do these uh, BIOS flashes, like I said, from the manufacturer or uh, and this is a really good practice too because flashing your BIOS uh, can, can fix a lot of problems that you might have noticed a little buggy but you kind of put off well then you do this BIOS update and that that error has been reported the manufacturer has fixed it you do that update to your BIOS oh you see that those bugs are no longer there pretty simple process just make sure you have a copy of the current one just in case uh, something goes wrong and you need to go back to the previous version of the BIOS. And there are different ways of installing the BIOS updates. You can do an express BIOS update. You can update from a uh, flash drive, you know, such as a USB thumb drive, um, going into the BIOS and going going through and doing your setup that way. You might have a bootable CD that will detect that. and I've seen these with uh, different companies and then you know maybe maybe it's just downloading it from the internet from the manufacturer's website and 
running that executable and it does it all for you. Some people think if it's not broke, don't fix it. Only update if you're having trouble. You may not know you're having trouble yet, so you might just want to check and read about why the BIOS updates there. Decide if you want to do the update. Big key here at when you're doing, when you're flashing your BIOS, don't let an interruption happen. Let it complete before you shut the computer off. An interrupted BIOS can really, really damage the system. So make sure if you're doing a flash, make sure you let it complete its cycle all the way into a fresh boot. And then lastly, replacing the CMOS battery. Make sure you obviously choose the correct battery if you're going to replace it. When you take the battery out with either you know your thumbnail or you might have to use like a little screwdriver. Make sure the computer is off by the way. Um, when you're when you're going to do it, the replacement, make sure you power down the system as I've told you before. Get rid of any residual power after you've unplugged the, the cord and remove the case cover and then make sure you're using that grounding bracelet to remove the old battery. A lot of times you'll have to use a flathead screwdriver to take this out and then when you pop it get that out and you get your new one you just kind of use your thumb to push it down lock it in place put your case back on plug your power cord back in then turn your computer back on guys if you do decide to install or replace the motherboard you know follow the the simple steps of doing that use the manufacturers documentation if you can check out videos you know it's there's some simple steps. Verifying that you have the right motherboard, obviously that's the very first step. Remove components so that you can get out the old motherboard like we did in previous chapters. If you have jumpers, make sure you set them. Install your I.O. shield so that your connectors can be there for uh, after you're all done. Put your motherboard in. Don't forget your risers if you need them or if they come with it because you don't want that contact with the, with the metal surface. Install your processor then. Install your RAM. Attach all your cables. Install your video card. Put the case cover back on. Plug it in. Attach your monitor and keyboard. Any peripheral devices you need. Then boot up your system. Enter your BIOS. Verify your settings. Hopefully you will then be good to go. But make sure you observe your power on self test that so there's no errors. Make sure Windows starts up with no errors. And then check and see if you need to now install your motherboard drivers and any type of other drivers that are needed for expansion cards. After that, you should be good to go. Thanks again for joining me in Chapter 4, which is all about motherboards. I know you have a lot of information to look over. Make sure you pay attention to the types of motherboards as well as sockets and chips. Take care, everyone.